Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. This is going to be another review video. In today's review video, we are going to be taking a look at the Mira Safety Tapper. And quickly guys, before we get this video started, I wanted to give a quick shout out to this video's sponsor. Today's sponsor is TacPack. They're actually a pretty cool subscription box company. This subscription box is something that you can sign up for in a few different levels that is going to get you a box once a month where you don't know what is in that box. But at the end of the day, you are getting a box and you're essentially surprising yourself like it's Christmas at the end of the month. It's also kind of a way to try something that you may have never thought about purchasing before. If you are looking to sign up for TACPAC, you can use the code FAF at checkout and that is going to get you a free tactical gift that will ship separately from your box. So you're going to get something on top of the box sent separately. The mirror safety tapper system is something that I have been messing with on the channel actually for quite a few months now. Sometimes it takes me a little bit longer to come out with these videos than I would like, but it all just comes down to when I'm getting to the range and how often I can test things. Now, of course, full disclosure, what is my relationship with Mira Safety? Mira did send me this tapper system for free to take a look at on the channel. They did not pay me per se to review this item or anything like that. They wanted my full and honest opinions and I plan to give you guys my opinions of the positives and the negatives. You guys will notice down in the description there is a bit.ly link to Mira's website and there's also a code that you can use which is Firearm Freedom 10. Now that code is going to give you guys 10% off of your order and it will also go to helping out the channel. So if you use that link use the code, I'm going to get a little bit of a kickback from that. So Mira has been pretty cool. They have been an awesome company to work with and always want to hear honest feedback about their product. First things first with the tapper. What is this thing? It is a tactical air purifying respirator. Now it is going to ship in this pretty freaking awesome case. I actually really like the case that it shipped in. And if we take a look at the inside here, it has all of these different cutout slots for everything that comes with this respirator. So it's really nice. Are you going to continue to use this case? Probably not because it comes with this small EDC Molly pouch that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. But it is nice if you're looking for a way to store this or just kind of a nice presentation when it comes to opening it up after shipping. I'm sure you could use this case for other things in the future if you wanted to kind of repurpose it, cut out the foam different ways. The tapper, as you could probably see here by the back roll and then also by just looking at it in the box, is a respirator. Now, of course, there is a difference between a respirator like this and a gas mask and that is mainly going to be the size and also the amount of things that this is going to protect you from. When you are looking at a full face gas mask and that is going to cover from your forehead all the way down, that is going to protect you against pretty much anything that could be harmful that you are breathing in and also getting into your eyes. So that is going to protect you from CBRN type threats and you can also utilize some pretty ridiculous filters in the way of the 40 millimeter attachments and you're gonna be protected from a wide variety of things. If you combine that with a full CBRN suit, even more protection, et cetera, et cetera. But it is a little bit cumbersome, it's a little bit large, and sometimes maybe you don't need all of that protection, but you do need something with you in that just-in-case scenario, and that is where this respirator comes in. I'm not going to lie to you guys, when I first got this respirator, you can see it's still a little bit dirty from our range trip and dust all over it and things like that. I really didn't like it that much. I, I got it out of the box, and I'm like, you know what, I just I don't know that I, I see the... Uh, the point in this, and I was in a little bit of a, a situation where I was trying to figure out, you know, is this really worth the money? Is it not? 
And as I started to use the respirator more, as I started to kind of research into different respirators that are on the market and kind of comparing it to this one and, and asking a lot of other people that have been in the military, you know, whatever, that have used similar respirators to this and why they use this, I started gaining a lot more data points behind this and I actually grew to kind of like it. I really do think that this is kind of a practical thing to have. Aside from the respirator, you are going to get one pecan filter. Now this is going to filter out a lot of particulates. It is going to filter out CS gas, any sort of biological particulates, illnesses, things like that. This filter is going to filter out no problem and a lot of other contagions that may be out there in the air. If you're looking at asbestos, other things that are out there in older buildings and things like that, this is the filter that you're going to want to have. Now, it is a little bit large, but it is nowhere near as large as an NBC filter, the nuclear biological chemical filter, and I was running this on the front of the respirator for the majority of the time, and that's where I found that it was the most practical to have. But the nice thing is you can run the filter on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side. There's a lot of different options to this respirator, which also aids to why I think it's kind of nice and practical. But along with your pecan filter, you are also going to get this P3 particulate filter. Now this, as you can see, is not even open. I did not use this filter. I was kind of keeping it as a backup in case I ever needed more of a particulate filter or whatever. It is going to come in this nice sealed plastic here. So that's gonna give you a pretty incredible shelf life. Now the other thing that it is going to ship with, which I thought was pretty cool and handy, are these small plastic pieces that actually just, as you can see there, lock into place and then you have the top screw on piece and you can keep them in there in their little sections if you want to and that's going to give you even more longevity on the filter because it is protecting it from dust and debris getting in there over time now of course once you break this air seal it is going to start deteriorating slowly the life of the filter but with these pieces it is going to increase that and draw it out just a little bit longer now, along with your kit, you are going to get the strap system in order to get the respirator on your face. How this works, you have this piece of plastic here, and you can see it lines up with this section of rubber in the mask there. Now, the section of rubber, it fits pretty good, but it's not really going to like click into place fully. It's just going to kind of click in over the side pieces there of the respirator. And now you have this that is going to go over the back of your head. And you guys are definitely going to be seeing some back roll over how all this looks on your face. And it is very low profile. And I will say very, very comfortable. A lot of you guys that are familiar with any type of CBRN stuff or respirators and things like that, you're probably screaming in the camera right now that Joe... You know, you said this filter can protect against all these things like CS gas, but CS gas can get in your eyes. This mask does not protect your eyes. And that is correct. And that was one of my, you know, uh, concerns when I first got it out. I'm like, okay, great. You know, this is CS gas, but you know, your eyes are still going to be out there in the open. But I did do a lot of research and there are quite a few different types of goggles that you can buy that are still super low profile, but will protect your eyes in the event of CS gas. So with just this and some goggles, you're going to have pretty much full protection against CS gas. But as I was doing my research, I found that the majority of the time that these respirators are used is not as much in a CS gas situation, although that is nice to have. If you are ever in a real world situation where there are contaminants in the air, some examples of that would be you're in a catastrophic disaster where a building has come down and you have maybe an older building and there's a lot of debris in the air and dust in the air. And as we've seen with a lot of natural disasters or a lot of different areas where a building has come down and a lot of people have suffered from long-term illnesses from the debris that was in the air, that is not really great to breathe in. And it can cause long-term health effects if you are just in that environment for a long period of time. If you were to have something like this small respirator in a 
a bag or something that is with your person, you had this filter with you, that could absolutely save your life in the long run. And those are situations where maybe it is not as dire to have your eyes covered, but it is that dire to have your lungs protected. Of course, the other situation that I've seen a lot of military folks use a respirator like this for, whether it's different uh, communities, special operations communities all over the world, is if you are going into a building or an area where maybe there are sick people that you need to be protected from a little bit more and you can utilize these filters for that, or if something is burning or on fire, not the building itself being on fire, but if you're in an area where there are burn pits or areas that you know things are getting burned and there are toxins in the air that you really don't wanna breathe in, this is a great way as just a low key, lightweight option to protect your breathing against small contaminants like that. As you've heard me say multiple times here with the Tapper of talking about its size. Now the size really matters when you're looking at this nice EDC Molly bag that they ship it with. Now this thing is actually pretty cool. It is pretty rugged and when you go to put the mask in here, you can very easily crumple up the harness in the back, fit the mask in there, and then also if we take our little plastic pieces off of the filter, I'm gonna actually leave the threaded piece on because I think that's kind of nice and handy to keep on if you need it. But you can very easily fit that filter in the bag and now in this super compact package, you have a full way to protect your lungs against any of those situations that I just called out there a few minutes ago. You can have it on the outside of a get home bag or your EDC bag. You could have it on the inside, even though it's just taking up a little bit of space. You can see we have a nice seal on the zipper there. And of course, Molly all over the front and the back. I don't think it's a bad idea to even have a medical pouch on the outside and kind of put this in to your, your medical emergency section just in case you need that. When you're looking at a full-size gas mask, it's great to have. It gets you the total amount of protection. I have multiple gas masks scattered all throughout the house. I think it's a really practical thing to have in your preparedness category of things. However, when I go to look at bringing a gas mask with me throughout my day-to-day -day life in a bag or something, it's just not practical. It is not something that I find myself being easily able to do. So that is definitely something to think about. And this is very easy to do that with. So although I don't get as much of the protection of a gas mask, I have some type of respirator that I could keep on my person every single day. And that is why I started to grow to like the tapper system. The other thing you guys are gonna notice in the back roll footage at the range is that I did not have this vented portion on the side. I actually just recently started to run that. Originally, it was this standard exhale valve on the side. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You're gonna have exhale valves off both sides. Now, again, as we talked about, you can pretty much switch to any side you would like for this setup. This is designed to be a little bit more low profile for being able to get a cheek weld on your rifle. Now, I am a right-handed shooter, so having this on the right side of my face is ideal, but if you were left-handed, you could move it over to the other side. When the filter is on the mask, you will absolutely notice that this thing has a lot more movement on your face than a standard gas mask. And you're gonna be noticing that on the back roll of the footage, you have a little bit of a heavier filter, whether it's on the left-hand side or the right hand or in the middle, and that is going to cause more movement. This thing is being held on by straps. Even though this mask had more movement like that and it was moving around on me at the range, I did not break my seal one time. Now, I think the negative that's worth noting is if this were to be hit one side or another, or you bumped it up or down, it is very easy to break your seal. There's You really have to work on tightening these straps. You just have to be cautious. There's different things in a lot of situations that could break the seal of your gas mask as well. So that's just something to think about. And it's all situationally dependent. If you're in an environment where if you break your seal one time, you're gonna die from toxic gases then obviously a full face, very secure gas mask is the much better thing to go with and the thing that you're gonna wanna have. This is not really designed to, to meet that role. This comes in at $199. Now, 
I first saw and I'm like, man, that seems a little bit high because, you know, you got respirators at, at Walmart or Home Depot or whatever that you can buy that are, you know, 30 bucks. And, and, you know, it looks very similar to me. But again, as I started to review the item and actually look at all the things that you're getting with it, I do think that that price point is really not too far off. You're getting a respirator that allows you to put a 40 millimeter filter on there, which is already pretty cool. And then also you have the ability to change the sections that that is at. It's coming with different exhale valve covers and other things like that. You are getting two filters, one which is a pretty high-end pecan filter and the other that is a particulate filter. You're getting the box that it's in and you're also getting the little Molly bag here which is kind of nice to have. The strap system is also designed, unlike the cheaper respirators, to really easily fit underneath a helmet, which is nice to have, especially if you're in a situation where you have a ballistic helmet on and you need protection. It is much easier to wear this under a helmet that you guys will be seeing in back roll than it is wearing a full face gas mask. It is by hands down easier, especially if you're running this under night vision or other things. This is far easier to run if you just need a smaller amount of protection. Mira also offers these two pieces here. These are M-lock pieces that allow you to actually attach the strap system directly to the M-lock of say a hardhead veterans helmet. You can get these for arc rails and other things that are on helmets and that is huge because it allows you to just mount this thing directly to your helmet and you can sit it right inside the helmet if you need to, pull it out, stretch it over your face and you have a respirator that is on your helmet. So I think that is pretty cool. These do not come with the package, you have to buy these extra. I think they're only like a, a couple bucks or something. They're not too expensive. And they give you all the screws to mount it with as well. That is going to wrap up this review of the Mira Safety Tapper. Let me know what you guys think of the tapper down in the comment section below. And of course, while you are down there, head up to the description and check out all of those links where you can find more content for firearm freedom and also help support the channel. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell and stay tuned for more great videos coming soon.